Hi, I'm Deepak Pathania and you're on The Art of Science, where you'll see a lot of DIYs and experiments that show science creatively. Recently, QMath, an edtech company, partnered with us to create some innovative math content. So we thought, why not visualize mathematical concepts in a tangible way? So in each of these videos, we took a real world problem and explained it through math. First, in the regular textbook way, and then we explained it through our trademark hands-on way, which you can even try and should try at home. Maths and DIY, sounds interesting? We present to you the art of math. Hurry up! But I'm getting scared. That dog will definitely chase us again. Yeah, he scares me too. Huh? Look! The dog isn't there today! Hooray! It's our lucky day! Two days ago, the dog almost reached up till here while chasing me. Hey, let's use this chain to mark a line so that we know that the dog can't reach us next time. Great idea! This is good, but it's hard to walk with these bushes and all. I wish there was a better way to handle this. Actually, let's learn this the Q-Math way. These circular sheets will clarify your doubts on circles. Circles? Why circles? You will be able to use the learning to solve tricky situations like the one with the dog. Every circle has a center. A circle is a shape made by all the points that are at a fixed distance from a common point and this common point is called the center. It's important to note that the circle is always in one plane. Is this a circle? No, this is technically now a pair of semicircles because they are in two separate planes, vertical and horizontal. But when I bring this down, now it's in the same plane and now it's a circle again. If we fold a circle anywhere, we get a line. All these lines are also called chords. As we go closer to the half point of a circle, the line keeps getting longer. When we fold the circle exactly in half, this straight line or chord is the longest line that can be formed within this circle. And this is called the diameter. Now when we unfold the paper again, we can see that this line runs through the center. Let's measure it. It's 20 centimeters. Now if we fold this circle in half in any other direction, we still see lines that are of the same length because all are going through the center. Therefore they are all diameters. Now that you've seen this with the paper, let's also see this with an interesting prop. This prop consists of a hollow circle and a scale visible underneath it. As we drag the scale around the circle, we notice that the length of the cord keeps changing. Starting from the top, the length keeps increasing as we go closer to the center. Once we cross the center, it starts decreasing again. So the longest chord possible in a circle is the one that passes through the center and that is the diameter of the circle. Now that we have this circle folded in half, what if we fold it in half again? This edge goes to the center, let's measure it. It's exactly 10 centimeters. This is called the radius. The radius is a line from the center to the border of the circle. The radius is the most important value that you need to make a circle because circle is a shape that is formed by this radius sweeping around the center. Now we know that the radius is a fixed length and if we sweep this radius around a point then we get a circle and that point is the center. Any line that goes through the center and touches the border on both sides is called the diameter which is double the length of the radius. So now I hope you use these hints to trace a boundary out of the dog's reach. This 
makes so much sense to me now. So the gauge is actually the center and the chain is the radius. Yes, and if we take this stick and drag it with the chain across the road, we can get a circular boundary. Wait, but the chain is tied to his neck, so that means that his head can still cross the line. You're right, let's attach another rope to the chain to increase the radius and make a bigger boundary. Let's try it out. Yeah. Thanks to Q-Math.